rewarding our troops. We always out here tailgating. That's the DJ, that's the board, 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 Great time at the game this evening, tailgating, watching the Steelers win another one by one point last second. That's back-to-back -back games I've been to. Packers, Ravens, last minute field goal for the win. But I, I noticed something about the culture is that when the Steelers are down in the fourth quarter, the fans all around them all believe they're gonna win. And that's the difference between a winning culture in a losing culture. There's a losing culture. When they get down, they feel like, here we go again. They don't have that belief. In a winning culture, no matter what's going on, the team, the players, the coaches, the fans, all feel like they got a shot to win, and they expect to win. And so it's uh, 12.30 right now, and uh, we're gonna be up back on it early in the morning on that mind, that spirit. We'll get the body in later won't be much sleep because we got a plane ride to Jacksonville baby rocking out some Florida this next week so stay tuned get out of this cold weather and make it happen let's get it almost 8 30 about to fly out to Jacksonville spend a couple days in Florida be good to switch up the cold weather to the warm weather so let's make it happen taking off to Jacksonville with Mackie D grinding it out Long weekend, full of activities, parties, work. Uh, late for the Steelers game. Told you we were gonna pull one off. That's three weeks in a row. AFC game. Monday morning, <coughs> back at it. Go see the Jacksonville office. After that, after that, we're back in the pulled up for St. Pete. So stay tuned. We have a bunch of stuff coming for you for the next couple of days. Me and him too. You never know what what can happen. <laughs> Me and him at the realm, me driving. So it's just a safe flight. We'll see you guys when we land. We're in Jacksonville, Florida. We are out here outside smoking cigars, having a couple glasses of wine with the crew of Jacksonville, special crew, RWTW. And so the question came up is, you know, what advice would you have for somebody to make it? In, in business, uh, something along the lines, right? Yes, and so, three things in no specific order. First one is work ethic. In first, start off with your office or wherever you're at on your football team, your sports team, your office, your school, wherever you're at. Be the be the hardest working person around you unanimously. So, if you were to walk in somewhere and say, "Who's the hardest working person on the team?" It has to be you. Who's the hardest working person in the office? It has to be you. So you have to be the number one hardest working person in that organization. Start off locally and then take it wider and wider and wider. But the first thing is be the hardest working person around you. The second thing is going to be uh, uh, coachability. So not 99%. The, the difference between being 100% coachable and 99% coachable is all the difference in the world. That 1% right there, it, this isn't like math where you get an A if it's a 99 or 100. This is like the Olympics. It's a sprint to where like the, the gold medal in fourth place is separated by like a, like a, a fraction of a, of a second, like moments. You're a legend or nobody remembers your name. And so you have to be 100% coachable when you find the right mentor. And being 100% coachable means that you have to listen to things that you don't feel like doing, the things that you don't feel like doing, the things that maybe you're, you're questioning some of these things. Those are the key moments that you have to be 100% coachable. And so it's the work ethic, it's the coachability, and then lastly, it's the discipline. So sometimes the discipline comes up because a lot of times people know 
what the workout is. They know what the right thing is to do. They know what time they want to get up. They know what time they want to get up in the morning. They know what they're supposed to be doing. They have the game plan, but they can't execute because of the discipline, the lack of discipline. They can't get up when the alarm clock goes off. They can't go to the last appointment. They can't stick with the diet. They can't go the extra mile. It's, it's, it's that discipline of sticking with what you know you need to do when you don't feel like doing it. That's what separates champions. And so you got to understand the mental aspect of it is when you don't feel like doing something, understand that your competition, they don't feel like doing it either. And the thing that separates the two of you or the hundred of you or you between the other thousand, you between the other one or you between your competition is at some moment, both of you are not going to feel like doing the same thing. And whoever has the discipline to stick with the game plan and execute is eventually going to win. And so those are the three tips that I would give to somebody if you want to make it to the top. Be 100% coachable, have the best work ethic around and have the discipline to ex execute what you know what you need to do. The things that you tell yourself when you're comfortable that you want to do, you have to execute when you're in pain. I need you to understand what I just said right there. The things that you're telling yourself in comfort when you're comfortable, the mindset, the game plan that you have for yourself. When everybody's comfortable, everybody has good ideas, everybody knows what they want to do. When you're comfortable, the things that you're telling yourself, you have to be able to execute it when you're going through pain. And that's what separates everybody. Up and at them, grinding, getting ready to crush the gym this morning. Been up since 5.30, getting it right. 6.19 a.m. here in Jacksonville was gonna share a couple things that, you know, I was just listening to John Maxwell a little bit and the thing that stood out uh, that he said is that, you know, most times it's better to bless people as they go uh, rather than begging them to stay. So think about how that applies to your life, personal relationships, or in business. Um, most of the time it's better to bless people as they go than it is to beg them to stay. And then a couple words uh, in scripture today that we were uh, reading in Proverbs that stuck out to me, uh, chapter 12, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. That was one of the ones that I highlighted. Uh, the next one, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rottenness to his bones. This is, you know, some of the young folks I'm starting to mentor and spend some time with them, letting them know how important it is to pick the right, the right woman, the right wife, the right uh, queen, the right person to have your back, the right rock. Uh, I believe that's one of the, if not the biggest decision that a person uh, can make uh, in their life. So thank God I got that one right. Round one in the books. Another one in the books. Part two of days. Round one. Got some leadership gold in. Got Proverbs in. Got cardio in. Now we're gonna go smash the office. Let's get it, Chad. About 18 hours yesterday. Round two today. Called the, the grind life, not the kind life. So <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. The yeah. right person wants leadership. Yeah. You know, it's like the right leader, I just develop. I don't make them. Yeah. They already have them. You know what I mean? Lacey already had this shit. Yeah. I met one of his college teammates. You know what I mean? Six, seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk about Lacey. You know what I mean? Like, he was always already kind of like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He talked to my coach, you know, from high school. I don't know if you guys watched the last grind like, you know, he was already talking about when we won a state championship. I'm the same person. This ain't me. This is the same shit. Yeah. It's just more polished, more developed. You know, somebody developed me better. I didn't make any bad decisions to blow it for myself and turn the ball over. But it was the same person. Nobody's surprised by yeah, none of this shit. I've been leading people in the locker room. Mm -hmm. So when, when you find the, the person, they've already been this way. You just gotta develop that and bring it out of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the right people are gonna wanna be in leadership. They're gonna wanna be captains. That's what they've been doing their whole life. You just gotta point them in the right direction. So I'm talking about that from day one. Okay. Because then everything goes back to the reason why you can't be late. You can't come in at 8.32 when you got to meet at 8.30 is because when your team starts to come in at 8.32 instead of 8.30, those small disciplines transfer over into the field. So the reason why I blow up over small shit, it's not about 
8.30. It's not about 6.10 versus 6 o'clock. It's about the small discipline of doing the shit that's uncomfortable that's going to eventually make you great. It ain't got nothing to do with being here at 6.10 versus 6 o'clock. It has everything to do with the small discipline that it takes in order to be great. Those small decisions that you don't tend to give into, that's where the millions are at. And so I'll start bringing that up to people that I'm mentoring and say, bro, I'm just talking to you like you're already an MGA. When I see you, I'm developing you and I'm looking at you to have 40, 50 people under you. You don't have none. But yeah. when I see you, I see you with 40 people. Yeah. So I'm trying to coach you right now for game time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why do you, right. go, to you go to school and get an education? Why do you get an education? Should you get a job? We can stop right there. Right. Mm -hmm. You get a job to save for retirement safely till you're 72 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that was it. That was the that was the, the mindset. You know what I mean? Like I was like the first one to make it through the gauntlet and go to college. Like my grandparents were looking at me like, you're what? You're doing what? You're gonna sell life insurance? They didn't understand this shit. You know what I mean? Like how much what's your what's your what's your pension? What's your retirement? What's your you know what I mean? No, nobody thought like this. And so the difference between the middle class and the world class thinking was I'm watching him brainwash his kids already to be an entrepreneur. Everybody else is brainwashing me to get a job. Play it safe. So I'm like, oh yeah, I guarantee you, I don't, all my kids are going to be trained on this stuff. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a lack of talent in these other areas, it's a lack of knowledge. Nobody's telling these people. So now I'm working with all my kids, all my, all my children, and I'm teaching them finances, credit, how to get your credit score up, how to use the bank's money to make more money, how to be an entrepreneur and all that stuff, not to go be work for them. Now, if that's what their calling is, then, then so be it, but at least educate them on what they want. You know what I mean? I say all of that to tell you, you gotta create this vision for yourself. And you gotta watch the way that you're thinking, because the way that you look at things, so leaving Jacksonville was a great trip on our way to uh, Tampa, Florida, Tampa St. Pete office uh, for a few days. Get to mix a little business with pleasure. Visit my family while I'm down there and uh, huddle up with the office. We got some fun going on tomorrow. Going to get some business done during the day. Cash money consulting. And then later on in the evening, going to take some folks out. Uh, that did a great job this week at the office, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, but one of the things I want to do is um, ask Maddie D something. We were talking about in the car on the way here, and I know, I know you hate stuff like this, Maddie D. But uh, it's not to be bragging or, or being boastful or anything like that. It's just to encourage somebody, uh, maybe in this business or not in this business. Uh, of what the power of, of residual income can do. So why don't we switch places oh, and uh, so why don't you tell tell me or tell us to all those folks out there grinding what we were talking about in the car about your house. I was telling them, you know, the house that he lives in, he hosted us this past week, had Santa Claus at the house. All the kids at the house, buses going around to see lights, big Christmas party. And I was saying, did you ever think that it was going to be like this? And that your house that you live in now, even though you're young, is is something that's hard to even dream of. When I was a kid, it was I didn't even dream that big to think it was even possible to do something like that. And then out of his mouth was, what? Do you remember what, what we talked about? Yeah, it was... Um... I don't even really notice the payment or, or anything like that because of the residual every month. I just, it was always a goal. And kind of like Simon said, I uh, I grew up in Dormont in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, which is in the South Hills. And my house probably growing up was about $60,000 house. Nice, my parents worked their butts off to give us a better life, send us to college. And uh, me too, we would, um, I don't even think we drove through these neighborhoods whenever I was uh, when I was young. I didn't even know they existed. So, you know, you, you go to purchase a, a house in a decent area, wherever it is, if you're making a, a, a big jump in uh, your bills or, you know, finances that are gonna come out of, out of your pocket, there's a little bit of nervousness if you've never done it before. And I remember being, I was, I was nervous. I remember talking to Simon about it. And, uh, you know, I've been there about six months now and I don't even, I don't notice the payment 
and it's solely because of the residual income. So it was like a goal of once my residual got up to a certain amount, I was just like, okay, let's uh, every month take that and put it towards all the bills and put it towards the, the house. So, I mean, Amen. I mean, you hear the term residual, uh, but it's not a punchline. It's a real, real thing, and they build up. And they, and they build up, so. You know, Six may, figure renewals, baby. Yeah, yeah maybe, I'm, maybe I'm biased, but it, it would be hard to imagine being in something uh, without residual when you know they exist, because they're awesome. Amen, truth.